That makes this match, the fifth match of the day, very high stakes with both Furia and Pioneers who have played their late games excellently, now with the ability to close it all out. Zone Pulse will be jumping into game momentarily as things do kick off with, you guessed it, another Phoenix Legacy Contest. Not this idea. Just like bleed and drop, we just can't control ourselves. We have to send it. <laughs> we got, we got, we got to no, do it. We gotta, no, I no arm their way. <laughs> it was, it was, yeah. it was appropriate decisions. All right. Still though, for Phoenix Legacy, it's a start for themselves in New Embers, where they really are trying to figure out how they can try to recover what is early starts. And for pint size power, they're more than happy to get involved in these changes. Pine size power pulled out the bubble. They wanted the bubble fight, but Caselos is very low. These massive shots not quite connecting, oh. and he gets taken down. That's Nasky that does it. His pine size power now down just two. Have Lemic with some defensive fences and find a knock onto Taxi as well. Pine size power are actually bringing this back. A res comes out onto Caselos. It's good. It's a start. A sky nade, though, makes it difficult for Lamek somehow surviving off of a single point there. Cassells brought down by the heat of the double. Mozams rearing their ugly head for Fade. Trying to play this one around the fence line. Still comes back to bite from what I can only expect to be, yes, shots from the outside. The third party has arrived, Dia. I mean, we knew that it was going to happen. There is always so much pressure especially in the early game when you know that a fight like this is going to break out. Now, Pine Size Power do go down. Phoenix Legacy are going to be able to find a res, and we'll see what happens. Had great rotations early and really spotted out a lot of these zones in some of our first four games, but have struggled when it comes to these additional fights. As a result, they will be one of our first teams eliminated here from this game five, and for Moist, even after delivering the blow there, they're happy to walk away. Does, it does feel bad though, like pre pressure's always on you when the ring yeah. pulls to you and Solus have prioritized edge play so often that just don't go their way here. Now TSM did come in with a really effective third party timing, but they haven't actually found enough damage to make this stick. E8 start to turn this thing around. Oh. It's TSM head for the hills, in come Moist, and E8 are balancing two different fights. Sykes has got a nice off angle. Does drop down onto the low ground and Moist seem to be winning this thing. Slayer and Zack are both down. And now, I mean, TSM still in the area, but E8 have got to run. E8 down to just the single member. TSM also dwarfed without Verholz from below. It's Moist finding what they might potentially so as the end here. The other side of the action, Guild more than happy to send Zap home. That leaves one individual for both of these teams left alive. I want to highlight the excellent utilization of the drone there from Timmy to set that EMP up for later. And of course, the wipe on the responding one from E8. Had that not come through, maybe they didn't go for that full push. Doom again showcasing the mechanical abuse that they're inflicting on this lobby. See here. Looks like a bit of an end potentially on its way for the Stallions, playing for recovery, but buildings galore when it comes to this map allows them to paint themselves in a picture that, well, at least keeps them healthy for now. Forbidden, they have to slow things down. Keep moving when you're in the center of the map. A still team is a dead team, and no one appearing more dead than Reflex right there as Army National Guard do suffer some losses at the hands of 2R1C, one of the most aggressive teams in EMEA and even the world managed to take out a squad. Army National Guard unfortunately going to go down in 18th, but they'll have a shot this next game as long as no one closes it out. They be in the perfect position to cut both of these teams off from the next ring. Each Cholos, however, rotating right past 2R1C may actually be the thing that attracts attention. And this is the real focus of the game because in zone, not much is happening. Boys top high ground, TSM are set up in a building, but it's around the edge of the circle where Alliance are fighting over sleepers that were really getting the excitement. 
This is the aggression from this team that we love to see highlighted, especially when secluded in the 3v3 has allowed them to take off. But it is, once again, in so many instances, the runaway action, the availability to look for safety that oversleepers are allowed to play with here. Now, for the Stallions, we talk about them with the slowing of their game. Maybe they finally now get to respond. A mobile shield, though, saves the day barely at the end. Aberlele just barely unable to find the literal final bullet to maybe seal the deal I mean stallions have been playing with a lot of excitement this game Over there. they're Over always there. taking positions that aren't, aren't aren't actually safe bets but that can turn into KP not say around the edge like somebody like Alliance has been or even Furia are this game but Instead, going, here's around the point in the map where we think people are going to make mistakes. And they actually end up rolling right more often than not. The fact that they're in very nearly the dead center of zone right now is fascinating. I can't wait to see what happens with them in the next couple of minutes. Each Cholo's also making their way in. Now have the zone at their back, so we'll have to move rather quickly. Remember, 2R1C, we're moving in behind each Cholo's as well. So there are going to be a lot of teams in the southwestern side of the map that should be falling down in the next couple of minutes. Well, you say that, but I do want to highlight the point we brought up fairly early in this game, and it's the fact that there is a little bit of clarity when it comes to that future zone still, right? A lot of these teams did not set themselves up the best, and for even 16 squads remaining, if these teams can stiff it out somehow, some way, whether it be through scan or just simple visualization, they could find themselves some potential real estate. unfortunate for doom this is exactly what we talked about southwestern side of the map unfortunately just doesn't have a lot of room to fight now doom and phoenix legacy split up to our 1c actually sending it on to i believe the last member of e8 as we speak mm. so unfortunately there is a lot of action going down and wow. it's not going to favor E8, I know, my prediction. I know, I know. And there will be oh, there will be a next game. Maybe, maybe, Zephyr. I mean, right we can't harp on you for a single rat. <laughs> that's that's nothing true. you can control. Now, 2R1C actually inherit this fight, and this is what I'm really interested in. What will 2R1C choose to do here? Since Phoenix Legacy and Doom have split up, if there's one team that would pick a fight with Doom, it's absolutely 2R1C and their Revolt that is ready to go. Something that might terrify them, but for Doom, are far in a way already. Meanwhile, at the heat of our zone, the place that Moist has held onto for so long here, they need to maintain this high ground position. The problem being the fact that from the southeast, you get access for free. Coffee shop more than happy to find initial knocks onto Timmy here, and now set up upon two consequence of not having the recovery not having newcastle not having anything to make this revive effective they're gonna get the well, at least pull back into center and it's simply up to waltzy to defend waltzy sending it onto the low ground actually trying to finish off this kill almost gets away but is hunted out through the smoke moist go down and furious slide in at just the right time picking up some kills on coffee shop and claiming height coffee shop largely get away relatively unscathed but furia having high ground now is huge it's massive, especially for Endgame and for oh, Coffee no. Shop. TSM, even in their full recoveries, are able to find the wipe here. But that's not something I might be happy about if I'm any other team. You've just alleviated pressure within the resort for Furia to potentially worry about. I mean, Dia, if there was any game to hope for, this would be it. Ultimate high ground is so good in a zone like this, and Furia, as you say, have so few teams now that can actually contest it. Stallions, maybe, as they were playing just underneath Furia, but when we get the opportunity, I'd love to take a look, Furia, at how they play this. The next couple of minutes going to be critical for a team on match point, as KCP, still very much alive, can take this away, and Doom, who have been our most aggressive squad by far, are still alive, still looking for fights, and getting skynated out of there by 2R1C! Silvo Dia to 2v2 here, EMPs to need a security, but that's that Revenant ultimate we've been waiting to see come online. You can talk about aggression all day, but when it comes to purely 
compositional advantages, Jarn Seer are more than happy to make the impact for Alliance. They've got to find 3v3s for themselves here. Skynet was absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to be thinking about that for the rest of the day. Alliance don't have to worry about that since they've got a roof over their heads, but they give it up looking for a few kills. In fact, doesn't have the access to height that his teammates might, and Lou takes him down unlucky. Now looking for the answer is Lou Shieldless is going to be playing on the high ground. Unlucky doesn't manage to land as many Mozambique shots as he would like, oh. but does get the knock on to Lou before we say goodbye to Alliance. They play the game of ring around the Rosie and they lose in every way. Literally seconds behind at every turn there. Had they been in the sight lines, potentially could come on top with the decision making, but are just a handful too slow. For the Pioneers, they themselves now just starting to get involved when it comes to this end game. They've been relatively quiet almost all game long and are now just slowly starting to foot their way in from the east. Problems though, TSM, of course, as well as the Cholos on the defense for both sides makes this an incredibly difficult rotate. TSM are spotted as KCP know that somebody's being shot at right in front of them. Not a lot of cover for the Pioneers as Anbu does fall, recovery nearly impossible, but I love the old from Deeds. Covering the escape with a mother load lets Pioneers at least find some heals momentarily. Deeds does have the opportunity to throw out a few more Thermites, actually covering their escape even further. Do they get Anmu back into this? No, they've got people shooting at them from above. I guarantee you that's Cholos there. We just saw them moments ago. And even still, Anmu is allowed to persist here. Deeds, though, knows that he's got no chance to get this off any further forward. Needs to get it done now. Anmu back in the game, sticking for the battery. And the Pioneers have made for recovery. And Azazel and Kirov, they've got no sidelines. The Cholas have a lot of zip lines out of here. They can push any fight they'd like. But unfortunately for them, it's just a duo. It has got to be exactly the right time. Taking a look at this oh zone. Furia, again, I can't believe we're talking about them once more. Have given up high ground, but they've given up it up for a priority on zone that no one else has. Certainly not Bleed, who will be pushed in by the edge of the ring and are almost certainly going to lose at least two people to this. Aberlele already starting to at least damage it out over for bleed pushed into zone means potentially the end stallions more than happy oh to feel the deal and with that kind of damage coming from our later rings you can't put your bets on the med kit just a bit too difficult to make your way in at this point in the game stallions do get to keep going even whipping out the zip line up onto high ground albra lately helps escort 2R1C from the building, from the lobby, and now gives Stallions the chance to fight for high ground. They do have, like we talked about just now, the opportunity to move a little higher up, or they can move into zone, because again, Furia are one of one teams in the next ring. Stallions could be the second one. With six squads remaining, two of our teams on match point, KCP and Furia, both at least consistently hold a spot for now. KCP though, this is a struggle for them. We talk about the difficulties towards the Southeast section. It doesn't get much better off of this choke. You already have so much focus from TSM originally, but from this high ground, Ichilos have been continuously pressuring. KCP have two smokes to make this work. That's what I'm counting on here. That's what any fan of KCP has got to be counting on is what sight lines they'll be able to cut off because smoking themselves simply is not going to work. The time is now on move deeds and Gen oh to move. Maybe a zip line could help them out here and out one goes. The energized zip line gonna give them the opportunity to rotate with the damage reduction as well. Pioneers fly through the ring and somehow stay alive for just long enough inside this building. Deeds Get the mother load off. We're down to one. Furia know what's going on here. Furia have the opportunity to take out a squad. Forbidden Gaming go down top five for both Furia and KCP. Then Furia have already been distracted. Looking at other squads, KCP may very well reset. Looking for full recovery. Deeds will be the first up here, but shots from across make it difficult. Surprisingly, he's found oh. the opportunity, but doesn't stick the bat. Instead, it's a dream eliminated. Vaxlon, the one to seal the deal, potentially set that Furia roster up for the win. Top three squads. The nightlife could come to a close. 
TSM from high ground do have all three members left. And other way, other way, otherwise, rather, it is Stallions who could play upset to Furia. By far the closest team to them as TSM try and take as much space as humanly possible. It's a lot of good pressure here from Stallions that could dictate the pace of this game because if you force TSM off of you in these final moments, you at least put them in the position to send for Furia, and that could be something that keeps us going one more game. But it comes down to, well, at least the decision-making from them in the end. Where do TSM go? Where do they play this one forward once the height is lost? What an arc for Furia this would be, coming from a disappointing finish for themselves over in the playoffs where they weren't able to close things out, weren't even able to get close to match point. They've no. had a dominant performance and they could close things out in the fifth game. TSM land out with smoke, just covering their mm. entry as Verholz joins the rest of his team on the wall. Not a lot of heals left, or at least not a lot of big ones for someone like Verholst. Their sustain going to be pretty limited in a fight, an extended one up against Furia. Meanwhile, Keon, the sole individual holding off the Stallions here on the edge, down to the low ground. They'll try to make the cross, the climb from Crook, the mobile shield to cut the distance. The call's forcing Furia now back to regroup as three to play the west side. Furia, importantly, are not picking a lot of fights and are staying safe behind these fences, something that I know oh, Stallions really nice. were trying to do moments ago. Out goes the Newcastle wall. TSM actually now firing down at Stallions. It's Verholst who's on this flank. Furia under almost no pressure at all. Out comes the mother load. In come the smokes. And Furia are sitting back and watching as TSM and Stallions pick a fight. Looking to rotate, TSM will lose out on this cover in just a moment and potentially forced to the low ground here. We'll have to make a decision to potentially send the Newcastle Castle Wall a drone ahead, broken at a critical time. Second, another drone. Furia are defending against two potential EMPs here. Vaxalom went crazy low, and the fact that Furia didn't lose a member there might just be the thing that wins them this game. They've just got to hold on to high ground managed to not be pushed. Zap and Verholz down on the low ground. Stallion still gonna be pushed into them momentarily. Reps goes down. TSM or a duo. Keon gets pushed and Keon gets one clip. It's a trade, but barely as Furia as a duo must win the whole thing. Oh! Three squads left. We're gonna be dropping down physically as Madness eliminates Stallions. Last two squads and it looks like Furia are going to do it. Dropping in. Furia will close us out. Nightlife comes to an end and it's Furia that wins on match point. It is a recovery. It is a defense. It is something that Furia have been hunting for all day long.